Today we're going to be starting a new unit on heat energy and heat transfer. And to begin this unit out with lesson one, we're just going to be looking at what is heat. We're going to be talking about what heat energy is and how we can measure it. Now heat is a term that we use to describe the transfer of thermal energy. Thermal energy is one of the types of energy that we learned about last year in fourth grade and we'll be looking at it more in detail this year. Now thermal energy is a type of energy that happens as a result of the movement of molecules. And everything, whether it's a solid, a liquid, a gas, anything in the universe that's made of matter is made of molecules. And these are these tiny particles that make up objects and substances, but whatever type of substance it is, the molecules are always moving. In gases, they move around a lot and freely. In liquids, they're more compact, but they still have a good amount of movement. But even in solid objects, like a table, a wall, the molecules have movement. Now, while these molecules are moving around, they're coming in contact with other molecules. And as they move, they brush against other molecules, they bump into molecules, they move around them, and so forth. And this movement creates what we call heat. The faster these molecules move, the more thermal energy they're able to generate. You can think of it almost like friction with your hands. If you rub your hands together slowly, you can feel a little bit of heat from that movement. But if you move them more quickly, you get more friction, it generates more heat. And molecules work in a very similar way to that. As they move, they generate thermal energy. Now we measure heat in a unit called temperature. So when we're talking about temperature, we're measuring the amount of heat, the amount of thermal energy that something has. And there are several different temperature scales that we use. And we're going to look at three of the most common ones. The Fahrenheit scale is the one that people in the United States are most familiar with. And we're one of the few countries in the world that use the Fahrenheit scale exclusively. But it's a scale that we use when we hear our weather reports. If they say it's going to be 80 degrees outside, that means it's going to be 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And degrees are just the units of temperature that we use. We talked about units when we measure mass, we use grams. When we use volume, we use milliliters. And when we use temperature, we have a unit called degrees. That's what that little circle next to the number stands for when you see a temperature written. Now on the Fahrenheit scale, and just to kind of compare the different scales, we're going to look at the freezing points and the boiling points of water. So on the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. A second temperature scale that's used by many countries around the world is called the Celsius scale. And if you ever look at a thermometer that's got two sets of numbers on it, it'll usually have a F over 1 for Fahrenheit, and it'll have a C over the other for Celsius. Because in many countries, a lot of the things that we use the Fahrenheit scale for, things like temperature, weather, cooking, they use the Celsius scale. Now the Celsius scale works really well for scientific measurements and for lab activities that we do, we'll be using the Celsius scale. And this scale is based on the boiling point and the freezing point of water, which makes it really convenient to use for science. On the Celsius scale, water freezes at zero degrees. On the Fahrenheit scale, that would be 32 degrees. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the same temperature as zero degrees Celsius. And on the Celsius scale, water boils at 100 degrees. So 100 degrees Celsius would be the same temperature as 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It's different numbers, but because it's different scales, those two temperatures would be equal. Now the last temperature scale that we're going to look at, this isn't one we'll use in class, but it's used a lot in science, and it's what's called the Kelvin scale. And the Kelvin scale is interesting because it's based on a point called absolute zero. And we'll look a little bit more at heat and how objects have heat, but absolute zero would be essentially the point where there is no heat in an object. There's no movement of molecules. We said that heat comes from the movement of molecules, so if you have no movement of molecules, you have no heat. The warmer an object gets, the faster they move. The cooler an object gets, the slower the molecules move. But if it ever got to the point where it was so cold that the molecules completely stopped moving and had no motion, there would be no heat, no thermal energy, and that would be this point of absolute zero. And this is a temperature that scientists haven't been able to reach. They've gotten very close to it. But every substance, no matter how much scientists try and try to cool it off, 
they can never get a substance so cool that it has no movement of molecules. There's always a little bit. So if there's that little bit of movement in molecules, there's a little bit of heat. But absolute zero is a point at which molecules wouldn't be able to move. And this temperature on the Celsius scale would be negative 273 degrees. 273 degrees below freezing on the Celsius scale. But on the Kelvin scale, we start with absolute zero. We don't have any negative numbers. So this temperature on the Kelvin scale would just be zero degrees Kelvin, which makes the Kelvin scale a really great measurement scale for measuring and recording very low temperatures. So this was a simple introduction to heat, just talking about what heat is, the movement of molecules and thermal energy. We talked about the scales we use to measure temperatures. Over our next several lessons, we'll be looking at heat in more detail. We'll see how it can transfer and see some other really cool things that we can do with heat energy, conductors, insulators, and much more.